there has been a resurgence in the energy revolution movement worldwide over the past decades, but it has not been covered or reported by the mainstream press, establishment, scientific journals, or university research publications. Most of the groundbreaking discoveries have been made by innovative individuals with inquisitive minds. They have observed experimental results related to cold fusion, superconductivity, and magnetic motors that seem to defy the laws of physics chemistry and electrodynamics currently accepted. These phenomena are often referred to as over-unity energy or free energy, where energy output from a system or reaction, such as a magnetic motor or cold fusion reaction, appears to exceed the energy input. A plausible explanation is that this excess energy is being tapped from a yet-to-be-fully-understood source. The initial question that arises for skeptics is, why, if these technologies and discoveries are genuine, haven't they been reported or mass-produced to meet our energy needs? The answer lies in suppression. What does suppression mean? It can take an active form, where corporations, oil companies, or OPEC, for instance, that do not wish to market the invention, would sabotage or destroy the laboratory and prototypes, and even threaten the inventor's life, if they attempt to market the revolutionary device again. Passive suppression, on the other hand, occurs when a competing company with significant financial resources, like some major oil companies, would acquire a patent with no intention of bringing it to market until the demand for oil greatly surpasses the supply, causing gas prices to soar. Then they would begin marketing a 100 miles per gallon carburetor for internal combustion engines. Other forms of passive suppression include universities that receive substantial funding from oil or nuclear establishments. They may refuse to conduct research or stifle brilliant professors by withholding tenure from publishing theories and results regarding the mechanisms and principles behind these over-unity motors and cold fusion reactions. Additionally, there are instances where a patent office refuses to grant patents for revolutionary technologies, deeming perpetual motion machines, as they perceive them, non-patentable. If they do grant a patent, they can impose a secrecy order, preventing the inventor from disclosing any information to anyone, citing potential harm to national security as the reason. To the best of our knowledge, the following accounts recount instances of suppression that, hopefully, shed light on why this over-unity technology has not gained global attention or widespread use. It is our hope that those responsible for suppressing this much-needed new energy technology will reconsider their stance and integrate this technology into their business structure for a profitable future endeavor. The development of free energy technology has truly captivated the imagination of resourceful and unconventional inventors. Among the pioneers they admire are Nikola Tesla, John Keeley, and T. Henry Moray. Research and development have primarily focused on two areas. One, clean cold fusion, in contrast to the conventional and potentially hazardous hot fusion of nuclear energy. Two, zero-point energy. Once again, these technologies have faced active and passive forms of suppression. The following documented accounts aim to provide specific instances of such suppression. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. In the late 1970s, a brilliant inventor named Rory Johnson from Elgin, Illinois, created a laser-activated magnetic motor for cold fusion. This motor generated 525 horsepower, weighed 475 pounds, and had the capability to propel large trucks or buses up to 100,000 miles, using only around 2 pounds of deuterium and gallium. This breakthrough occurred years before Pons and Fleischmann or Dr. James Patterson entered the scene with their cold fusion technology. Rory Johnson was in negotiations with the Greyhound Bus Company to install this revolutionary motor in a few buses, aiming to demonstrate the fuel savings, reduced maintenance, and improved financial performance for Greyhound. 
Little did Rory Johnson know that OPEC was closely monitoring any potential competition to their oil business, and unfortunately, he found himself at the top of their hit list. The mistake he made was, actively promoting his advanced fusion magnetic motor in various magazines, openly discussing his plans to manufacture and distribute this revolutionary motor nationwide. Coincidentally, after Greyhound agents attempted to contact Rory Johnson following a year of no communication, they were informed of his unexpected passing. It was quite perplexing to see a man in his early 50s, in excellent health, suddenly meet such a fate. Later, it was revealed that, for some ominous reason, Rory abruptly vacated his laboratory in the middle of the night, taking all his motors and technology with him, and relocated to California before his demise. Another shocking development arose when the U.S. Energy Department placed a restraining order, or gag order, on Rory's company, Magnetron Incorporated, preventing him from producing the Magnetron engine. Appendix 1 includes a letter from Minnesota State Senator Marion Manning to U.S. Senator Dave Donenberger of Minnesota, questioning why our government would impose such a gag order on Mr. Johnson. Isn't this supposed to be the land of a free market economy? Apparently, not everything is as it seems. Something just doesn't add up about this entire incident. Could it be that the oil cartels are exerting their influence on U.S. energy policies? Do they have the power to dictate terms to the U.S. government? Let's recall the tragic events at Ruby Ridge, where overzealous U.S. agents took the lives of Randy Weaver's wife and son. Interestingly enough, around the same time, another inventor happened to be residing in northern Idaho, diligently working on an advanced zero-point energy device. According to the first-hand account I received from the inventor himself, an investor was scheduled to visit him, just as he made a breakthrough with his free energy device. Unfortunately, the inventor made the mistake of publicizing his achievement on a local TV station. The day before the investor's arrival, two government agents unlawfully entered the inventor's home, presuming that both the inventor and his wife were away. However, the wife happened to be home and proficient in handling a formidable handgun. She bravely confronted the agents at close range, refusing to accept their flimsy excuse of being cable TV repairmen inspecting their lines. If it weren't for the siege at Ruby Ridge involving Randy Weaver, who knows what other ominous events might have transpired that day. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.